Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny. Welcome back to yet another FNAF news video and happy nine year anniversary to FNAF. Yesterday on August the 8th, that's right, FNAF officially turned nine years old, which is freaking crazy to think about. That's only one year from a decade of FNAF. Now, because of the anniversary, we did have a few companies show their support of the celebration and teasing some of their brand new projects. It's nothing too, too big. Overall, this was kind of a quiet anniversary, but we still got a whole bunch of stuff to talk about. So if you're excited for all the FNAF news, don't forget to scroll down, subscribe to the channel, because subscribing to this channel is the best way to stay up to date with everything FNAF. To kick off this video, first up, we got this new t-shirt from Hot Topic. Actually, it's a woven button-up featuring the security guard aesthetic for Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Now, I have seen a few comments that this shirt was released years and years ago, so if that's true and you missed out on this woven up button t-shirt, well, now you can get it. It's got security Freddy Fazbear's Pizza on the front, as well as the emblem for Freddy Fazbear's Pizza on the back. Now, let's make our way over to the Fazbear fanverse, because we've got some very exciting news regarding Pop Goes Evergreen. Kane Carter put out a tweet saying, though he can't be prevented just yet, Pop Goes moves around the pizzeria correctly, and he can pick up Black Rabbit's parts and put the them down. The parts are placed in a set order, but they can now each be collected from one of three printers. This means that Pop Goes can technically print one piece from each printer room, like in the original game, or he can pick and choose, revisiting some previous rooms. If he wants to be really weird about it, he can even print three pieces from one room and three pieces from another. It should feel quite random. The dynamic ambient slash music has also been programmed, so the background audio gets more intense based on the current level of perma panic. It's kind of terrifying. So there we go, actual programming being done on the upcoming fanverse title Pop Goes Evergreen. That's very exciting to hear, and also these placeholders are really funny to look at. Sticking with Evergreen for a quick second, because of the unfortunate apparent cancellation of FNAF Plus, Kane did show off a scrapped ghost detector phone case themed around the game. Kane goes on to clarify, but with Phil out of the fanverse, we actually can't include this in Evergreen as he has never signed a release form as a creator on the project. Honestly, I think this is one of the best looking phones we've seen from Evergreen so very unfortunate that it's being abandoned. But also keep in mind there's like 50 phones planned for the game, so this isn't a huge loss. Sticking with the fanverse, we got Nixon, the creator of the Jury of Creation Ignited Collection, holding an AMA over on Twitter, specifically for questions about the office level in the Ignited Collection that is going to be the first level in the story mode version of the collection. He answered a lot, I wrote down some of the more interesting ones, so I'm gonna go through them pretty quick. Starting off with some mechanics, first up we got Ignited Freddy in the office. You still need to flash Freddy X amount of times to win, but there's more more things to keep track of and more lose conditions this time. Nixon confirming that Ignited Chica will still phase through the wall, and as for her cupcakes, they now have a lot more hiding spots they can hide in now, that number bumping up to a whopping 15 hiding spots. When asked about cues specifically for Foxy, he says, for this one, I don't really want there to be an obvious clue as to when the animatronics show up. I want the cameras to be crucial. However, for events like you being too late to flash Freddy, you will hear him leave to show that you failed. So connecting this back to Foxy does doesn't seem like there's going to be an audio clue for when he shows up. We're going to have to pay very close attention to where he is on the cameras. Bonnie's mechanic in the office has changed drastically. Nixon saying that Bonnie will jump scare you and drain your flashlight if you flash an area where he is at, making it impossible to deal with anything else until it's recharged. Now you may be a bit confused, what recharging stuff? That wasn't in the last game. Well, that's because Nixon's added a whole new room to the office level for this brand new battery mechanic, saying Bonnie will now drain the camera instead of breaking it, forcing you to go and use a battery slash fuse to recharge it. These batteries and fuses will also be needed to keep the main power running as well as your flashlight. So this new mechanic of batteries adds a bit more resource management to this level, something Nixon was adamant about, making the gameplay a bit more tense and a lot more fast paced. Another major change to the Ignited Collection office segment is when you power out with Freddy, which is still in the game, however, it will actually give you some sort of chance to win this time. Nixon saying, this time I want you to be able to maybe get one last flash in during the power out sequence. Moving on now to something I thought was super interesting, Nixon says he has a very big feature planned for pretty much all levels, which is something that he calls the jump scare director. Once you're technically dead, the game will try and figure out what the most effective way is to create a death scene. That sounds super, super interesting. Not a feature I see many fan games implement, and I really, really hope it pays off because this could be super cool. Moving on now to the story, Nixon says the story is completely different and is not directly 
connected to Scott and his family. Lastly, we got three points of just kind of miscellaneous info. Nixon confirms that the animatronics will not have actual voices because to him, it makes them way less scary. As for Easter eggs, he says there will be way less, if maybe no Easter eggs at all. I find it ruins the atmosphere and immersion of the game. Though something I absolutely cannot stand by what Nixon has done here. Does it have a Freddy nose honk? No. I don't know guys, I might need to skip out on this game. It sounds like a zero out of 10. Moving on now, let's talk about the anniversary of FNAF, which like I said was yesterday. Celebrating nine years at Freddy, we got a whole bunch of companies and people getting involved celebrating this occasion. Click Team tweeted out happy hashtag FNAF anniversary. We got Hex also celebrating the occasion with some very cute, lovely, adorable artwork. Even Game Jolt got in on the celebration, creating brand new quests you can complete to unlock prizes. Chances to win merchandise like U2's figures, as well as copies of Security Breach. Even Blumhouse got in on the fun. And actually going back to U2's a few days ago, they teased their next FNAF wave. And as we can see in the teaser image, it was the flocked figures. All standing in front of a print depicting the very first FNAF game. And for the anniversary, they officially revealed the wave will be releasing on the 15th of August. Like we just said, the figures involved are flocked Freddy Fazbear, flocked Bonnie, flocked Foxy, as well as flocked Chica. And most interestingly of all, a limited edition print, like I said, of FNAF 1. And by limited edition, they mean extremely limited edition. There's only 125 of these prints being made. So if you're a dedicated FNAF YouTube's collector, I'd recommend being there the second these things drop. And speaking of U2s, they kind of carried the anniversary because we got brand new fanverse plushies revealed from them as well. Previously, we've seen their sitting Pop Goes plushie as well as their Chibi Ignited Freddy plushie. We knew they're also making an Ignited Freddy plushie as well as a Candy plushie, presumably a sitting Candy plushie. Well, that still left us with two plushies we had no clue who they were, a Pop Goes plushie and the second FNAC plushie. And you might see where I'm going with this because to celebrate the anniversary, we got revealed to us the long Pop Pop Goes and Long Candy the Cat plushie. Definitely some plushies I was not expecting to see, but definitely some plushies I'm not unhappy to see. These guys look amazing. <laughs> These guys are based on the Long Pop Goes project that Kane and Emil made featuring Pop Goes and Candy. And these are not the final designs. In fact, a lot of people notice, hey, their eyes are different. You know, Pop Goes has more of the traditional blank space with the iconic U2's eyes, where Candy has those more anime-like eyes trying to hide the trademark U2's eyes. And so Kane is actually holding a poll over on Twitter, which style of the Pop Goes plush do you like best? He gave four options, the original version of the plushie, one with the bright eyes, just like candy, the third option with the anime eyes, the larger face, as well as some ear trims, and the fourth and final one is him with a closed mouth. That poll is going to be linked down below if you want to go cast your vote. What do you think of these brand new plushies? They're certainly very silly, goofy, ah, chunky boys that I can't wait to add to my fanverse collection. Right, well now let's move on to our final news topic for today, and that is Steel Wool Studios. Because this is a FNAF anniversary, a lot of people were expecting something big from Steel Wool. They just dropped the highly acclaimed Ruin DLC. They've got already another game releasing later this year, Help Wanted 2, a sequel to the first Help Wanted that was also critically acclaimed. I mean, right now, Steel Wool is kind of coasting. And we kind of got news on Help Wanted 2, they put out this tweet. Happy FNAF Day. Join us at PAX West for a special experience. Steel Wool Studios is bringing something familiar. And they attached this poster. With the original Help Wanted Freddy Fazbear art in front of a whole bunch of TV monitors, PAX West, Seattle, Washington. I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of hoping for another promotional or just overall new poster for Help Wanted 2. They could have at least added the Help Wanted 2 logo to this poster to drum up a bit more hype, but I guess this is fine. Because at the end of the day, this is clearly hinting towards Help Wanted 2 being at PAX West, which if you don't know, is a giant convention being held in Seattle, Washington at the very start of September. I think it's the first through the fourth. In 2019, Steerwell also attended the PAX convention and there they showed off tech demos for the first Help Wanted game. That was the first time we got a hands-on look gameplay footage for Help Wanted 1. I'm not trying to get too game theory on you here, but that was also about a month and a half, if I remember correctly, before Help Wanted 1 released. So could this be hinting towards an October-ish release date. I mean, Halloween, that sounds like the perfect time to release it, no? Either way, before PAX happens at the start of September, I do feel like we should expect a trailer for Help Wanted 2, because if they truly will have tech demos to play at PAX West with Help Wanted 2, 
I feel like it's not a good look if that's our first look at the gameplay. So I'm crossing my fingers. I'm really, really hoping from here before the start of September, we get a proper look at the game. It's crazy how Ruin just released like what, two weeks ago, and we're already getting hyped up for another FNAF game. I'd love to know, are you looking forward to news about Help Wanted 2? Are you going to be attending PAX? If so, do you have plans to play Help Wanted 2 if it's there? But that's going to do it for this FNAF news video. Thank you so much for watching, and once again, happy nine-year anniversary to FNAF. It's absolutely crazy. We're one year away from a decade, and I can't imagine what crazy projects we're going to get for that anniversary. But like I said, that's going to do it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.